and you had to be impressed with how Ohio State took care of business in sending Nebraska packing. Brian King really give him a lot of credit. He was able to come out and give the Coach Beals and the Ohio State Buckeyes enough innings to be able to use the pen just enough so now maybe they have some left for this next ball game and they can get after Michigan State. So Ohio State survives and advances, and the advancing happens quite quickly as they're just about going to stay on the field. They yes. play Michigan State in about 40 minutes after beating Ooh. Nebraska. Check it out, Nebraska, Ohio State. Do we have a, a secret weapon there for one of the teams pregame as Baby the grounds crew member hoses down the field? That's, uh, that's double duty right there. Ooh. Dexter Spitznagel having a rough outing for the Huskers. A Nebraska starter hitting Greg Solomon to load the bases then walking Tim Wetzel on four straight. Spitznagel lasts just one and two-thirds, giving up two earned runs. Darren Erstad's going to make a change. In comes Dylan Boat, who strikes out Ryan Seiprit, but the damage is done. Ohio State leads 2-0. Top three, Ohio State flashing a little bit of leather. Pat Kelly laces this down the third baseline, but Brad Hallberg, right place, right time, easily able to turn the double play at first as Nebraska would leave seven men on base through the first seven innings. Bottom four, Ohio State still up 2-0. What a ball game for Kirby Pellant. Swings a little stick, but he runs awfully fast. He can run, and Danon and Tom were saying, these are shades, this is shades of Charlie Hustle. The helmet comes off, and you're going to see the dive. Safe at third. I like it. The undershirt, the short sleeve tank top jersey. Did look a little Pete Rose-esque. One of two triples in this one for Pellant. He'd be driven in by Solomon to make it 3-0. Top six, 3-1. Cash Kalkowski, member of the Big Ten's all-name team, knocks in Richard Stock. 3-2 ball game to the eighth. Ohio State up 4-2, looking for a little bit of insurance. We told you Pellant had not one, but two triples. This one drives in a run. David Corner scores from first as Ohio State goes up 6-2. Pellant on base four times in this game. He had missed to get the sacrifice bunt down earlier, and then they decided, let's hit and run with him. It paid off. Now he's a guy who made up for some mistakes and error earlier in this game, but on the very next play, he starts a 6-4-3 double play as Ohio State continually got out of jams against that Nebraska offense, an offense which had scored 21 runs in the first two games, limited to just two in this one. Clearly, the Huskers had opportunities, nine hits, but only able to push two across as the Husker season comes to a close at 35-23. and 23. So, the three-seed Penn State sent home on Thursday. The four-seed Nebraska sent home on Friday. Meanwhile, form holding in the winner's bracket. Later tonight, it's Purdue and Indiana. But coming up next, it's Ohio State advancing. They will take on Michigan State. And the winner of that game sticks around to Saturday. But for now, for at least the next 25 minutes or so, Greg Beals can celebrate his team still sticking around Columbus. He also took a few minutes to chat with the fellas after the win. Coach, coming into this tournament, the big question as you move on, especially from the loser side of the bracket, is pitching. Tell us a little bit about what your thoughts were today with Brian King and Greg Grieve and what they were able to accomplish. Well, I thought we got great pitching. Brian King did a good job, and I thought he ran out of gas there, but we did had a few opportunities on defense to make some plays to save him a little bit, but uh, we taxed him a little bit because we did make some plays on defense. He battled through those innings, um, but it, it ate up some of his pitches. Greg Greaves, a guy that came in, and we liked how he mixed it up compared to, to Brian King. He came in hard with the velocity, and then uh, we, you know, we go to Armstrong, the lefty, and then to the Zay, the closer, and uh, kind of as scripted. And you know, as you get in this tournament, it's not—it's hard to script out games late <laughs> in this tournament with pitching. But uh, that one worked well, and uh, we got Trace uh, Dempsey, a freshman, that's going to go here in Game Four. Conversely, offensively, the bottom half of your order comes through in the clutch today, specifically Kirby Pellant with two triples. Tell us about the production offensively from the bottom half. Well, you know, Kirby started out the season as our as our leadoff hitter and a guy we thought uh, had potential to be our best hitter on our ball club. Started out real slow, but uh, he's got it going, and, and he, was, uh, he was a stud in that game right there. Coach, congratulations. Thank Have you. Have a good rest of the day. All right, we got one more to go.